I'll move to uh, enter into the agreement with uh, Fish and Wildlife Partners for Fish and Wildlife Program through the Department of US FWS for some uh, not weed, for some invasive species eradication. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero, sure. All right. I'll uh, actually, I'll just pass it down. Thank you very much. No, thank you. <coughs> yeah. Don't take a walk on after your Much game today. appreciated. No. A couple months from now, it'll look very different. Okay. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Yeah, just just one line, line, yeah. Yeah. And then a few guys that I have extra copies in case anyone wants them for the record, but I figured one official for me. That one. Yeah, we'll 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 Uh, you can just say where I can give you something to submit, but I want to submit here. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm not the agreement. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can give you an official volume. Knowledge, Mr. Okay. Super. And another step forward on the pathway. I'm excited. Yep. Yes. That's good. I know. It's going to be making some nice progress. Um, do you want to plug your meeting tomorrow night? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so tomorrow night, um, we're, we have a Pathways Committee meeting at 6 o'clock, and we're going to be making Thanks. our, um, um, as a committee, coming to our recommendation for what elements to put into the park proposal uh, this year, as well as if we can um, settle on a name call the park and um, and uh, yeah so, so that's what we're gonna decide and anybody's welcome um, and I would I wanted to check with you all and see if you had any more input on our plans the proposal do in two weeks and two days um, <laughs> so uh, I'll be at the meeting tomorrow great so. that's fantastic okay good <coughs> So, in other words, if somebody wants to step in and say donate the money for the project, we could name it after them if they were really, you know, had had some Absolutely. tax for, you know, tax reduction that they would like Absolutely. to get, you know. Or, <laughs> yeah. you know I, I, I don't know, but you never know. They might be out there watching, and say, hey, you know, I get money burning a hole in my pocket, and I like to have my name on something. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there you go. <laughs> So memorial trees. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. So. Um, oh, it's part of like phased and planting plan. Oh, well, stuff. that'll be. The, there's just a, there's a master plan now. So when somebody has the, you know, would like to make a gesture like that, we have a good way for them to do it. And That's we'll perfect. Have, you know, sighting and you know, I think we'll design for benches. Okay. Well, that's great. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much. Yep. Have a good night. Best of luck out there. Thanks. Okay. And then do you all don't have any input on the name or anything else you want on? Not, not at this point. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, yeah. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks so much. <laughs> all right. Uh, next up, we have our minutes. Uh, move to accept the minutes here as presented. We did a partial appointment last week, and yeah. this, this week we get the rest of it. Yeah. We get the, the bright yellow part. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Is there a second? Please. Still <laughs> oh, reading. still reading. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I moved oh, the minutes. Oh, yeah. Right. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and now on to Board of Selectment updates. Got any exciting things for us, Tom? 
I, I, well, I, I, would, I would like to address real quick the, um, we, we have received a few emails about the park. Mm. Uh, and, and I, and, and, and um, there, there, it's not a, I, I guess there's, there's more discussion that has to take, there's more discussion that has to take place mm -hmm. about it. Um, there are some people that have opinions on it and I hope, I hope they attend or get their um, thoughts to the committee so right. I mean they can be incorporated and, and they can know get a, a feeling for what the you know what members of the town are thinking um, and again I know that's I know that's a very hard I know that's very hard sometimes but I think it's very important um, that, that you could get out there and, and, and you let people know know what you know what your thoughts are yeah that's important get some yeah. feedback on that <clears throat> sometimes, sometimes we we don't do that, and that it makes it much more difficult. And especially, it's kind of a big centerpiece project, really, because it's this is sort of our downtown common area, right. so I think it's important. Um, I, I guess I also we received notification the other day that we we had our bond rating raised by Standard and Poor. That's right. Um, now. There's a gentleman out there, there's two gentlemen out there that I talked to in the very recent past saying that the Board of Selectmen is, is moving us right down the path to ruins. And I would just like to say this is the, I believe, our third or fourth increase in our bond rating. I think it's three, right, Scott? Yeah, it's number three. Um, in the last... 10 years mm -hmm. in the last 10 years because um, we were we had gone through some previous we had gone through some difficult times mm -hmm. so we're now rated standard and poor double a correct which is not too bad higher than the state no went from double a minus to double a right? right higher than the commonwealth oh. so mm. I, I just <laughs> think sometimes that um it's it's easy to throw, it's easy to throw, it's easy to complain, um, but when when an independent, someone independent on the outside that invests money looks at the town of Sunville and they say, it's not it's not being managed that bad, and I I think that's a reflection on on the town and and the board and our finance committee and our and our financial people and our our past town administrator and our present town administrators treasurer, collector, all of those people, everybody that's involved with finance. So um, I would say to those that <clears throat> believe we're headed down a path of destitution, um, there's professionals out there that says we're not doing too bad of a job for ourselves. Um, and, I, and I will go back and again for the override question, people have to understand it's our job, board of selecting job, finance, whatever, to bring the information to them. They don't have to, you don't have to agree, may not like the information, but if we didn't say anything, um, then it's shame on us. So we're trying to let, we're trying to let you know. That's it, Mr. Chair. All right. Scott? Uh, last week, if I could, Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. last week there was uh, two meetings of some measure of significance. The first was a 120 North Main Street meeting with RDI, with mm -hmm. the folks from the Austin Design Group uh, and the 120 North uh, Working Group. And this is the first um, meeting in the – this is the first meeting in the timeline that was proposed by RDI. And the goal of the meeting was to – basically do a reintroduction, what the relationship between the 120 North working group, RDI, the architects are all about. Yep. And we began discussing some of the um, conceptual uh, exterior elevations and, and uh, schemes. Okay. At no point was there any decisions made. Remember, it's not a town, it's not a municipal project. This is a private project of fr a friendly 40B. Uh, but the give and take is very, very creative. Again, I want to 
sing the praises of the working group only in that uh, there's a lot of talented people on that. You know, you got people who are developers, people who are realtors, people who are architects, people who teach architectural uh, teach architectural sciences in school. Uh, so it's it's a creative group, and and it's really really a, a fun collaboration. So we've agreed to continue uh, meeting, uh, and one of the areas that RDI asked about was, you know, where are the point? You know, where where is the point? Of the interface between RDI during the process and and um, and the, and the town, mm -hmm. recognizing that the 120 North Main Street's been uh, appointed as a continued advisory group, uh, they were they were happy to have the same faces. We're not introducing, you know, something completely new uh, to the project. So that's been very good. The second meeting was actually <coughs> what I hope is uh, we left a Thursday morning with a, um, a, a, a agreement, handshake agreement uh, on the police contract, which has been going on now since November. Oh. And if I could go over a couple of highlights yep. and then tell a, a couple and then, and then one request to the board and I'll, I'll explain why. So the uh, agreement as it's spelled out right now um, doesn't change fundamentally the relationship between the police union and the um, and the town. It does a couple of things structurally. Uh, one, uh, we used to have in our um, well, first of all, <laughs> if anybody who's got a bunch of stuff will understand what I'm about to say right now. Way back in the day when we were negotiating these contracts, and uh, they used to use the term uniform or protective gear. Well, th those those slowly but surely have turned into a lot of other things, and so there was a fair amount of consternation about that language and what do you yeah. do with that. So um, that was one fundamental change <clears throat> throughout the contract. We got rid of the terms simply protective gear and turned it into equipment. Equipment, I was going to say, yeah, because so much of it is other things these days. Right. So that's that's a that's a that was that was a, a fun thing though worm through the contract and see how many times it was referenced but uh, there's there's compensation for equipment now the town's always been uh, compensating uh, staff for uh, lost or damaged um, protective gear also we used to have uh, simple uh, five steps and at the end of and they were done by year year in service yep. so if you made it to five years you were at top step through a lot of um, back and forth with the association. Uh, we've stretched those steps out, added a number of, added another step to make it six full steps, but more importantly, added years in service okay. so that to get to and through those top steps, uh, it is now a 12-year period as opposed to a five-year period. Extended the duration. Extended yep. the duration. Now, like every good negotiation, there are things that are back and forth. It has to be compromised. So our base salaries and our top salaries have changed, and our scales have essentially stayed the same by percentage. Okay. So that's been very, very helpful. And <clears throat> lastly, as we go, just again, the one more cliff note here, um, the, the receiving and not receiving of the Quinn, the people who haven't negotiated contracts, remember the Quinn bill exists, the town's had a position, about what the Quinn's compensation is to existing officers. And in the last contract, we started with, as the statute now has been adopted, Commonwealth wide, there's a two tier system for those. There are those who have Quinn, and there are those who don't have Quinn. The town took the position two contracts ago and then reinforced it one contract ago. And it's important to bear in mind these are all three year contracts. So when I say two contracts ago, six years ago, we started down this path um, <clears throat> to have an education incentive, knowing that there, the town has this position, has had this position across its employees for a number of years about you know bettering through training and accumulation of education. That doesn't change at all in the uh, police department either. So we've we've taken those uh, uh, the math there and exercise that against the balance of uh, six credits per year, okay. right? 
through two full-time classes yeah. and, and gone out to Westfield State University in UMass and seeing what those values are. So that was another one. The other fundamental change here with us was we also called out our vacation time by years in service. Okay. So we went year in service, and there was this really funky gap. So you get two weeks upon the old contract. You get two weeks in a relatively short window. Then you waited years to get another week, another week, another week. Tapping out at 240 total hours. We, we worked together with uh, the association to create language that, that one through five years all stayed the same. That language didn't change, but yeah. we re chose to remove the gap and make uh, proposing to ch remove the gap and make the annual accumulation. Or if you continually employed, then you grab another eight hours for yeah, every okay. every consecutive year you continuously employed. And we did not change the cap. So yeah. what you see is what you see if you looked at across the scale. You'd see a progression from one to five, and then everybody who's after five. It's eight per year, eight per year, eight per year, eight per year. Evens it out. Right evens it out versus yeah. waiting a big gap. So some, yeah. there, was, there was a long time period in there. Uh, and then I think lastly, the other piece was about uh, uh, private duty details. The town has historically only compensated the officers um, when the town has received the money from the contractors. Yep. That's, a, that's a different approach, and Sunderland is in the vast minority of the Commonwealth uh, communities that, that does that. And we're proposing this year, in this contract negotiation, if those hours are worked, they're paid for in that pay period, and the, the town operates it through, is it revolving? Special S revenue. Yeah, I know, I always get those mixed yeah, up, special, special revenue is fine. Okay. So again, the town will still get paid, the contractors still pay, we're acting kind of as the pass-through. But there, are, there have been occasions where, uh, contractors, particularly certain companies, not well, certain private companies, like the big ones, it takes a little while to get paid. Yeah, so then they're kind of left yeah. waiting during that period. Right. Yeah. So you. those those are kind of the, the big areas of focus. There are some that are formulaic change. Uh, the cost of costs of the uh, contract um, COLAs were uh, three, three, and three. And because the part-time officers have not had a raise in a number of years, and we've instituted a series of steps, part-time officers would be three, three, and four, that third year when their full, our full um, scales are implemented. Okay. Also, from a, a financial time, <clears throat> I'm piggyback on what you were saying earlier about the bond rating. Our implementation schedule is across all three years of this contract. So at the end of the three years, people who are senior have, will have moved across the table. Mm -hmm. And I give the association a lot of credit for their flexibility. Uh, it could easily have been requested to simply implement in year one. And our position was that that simply was not affordable to dump everything yeah. on the whole yeah. year one. So. Yeah. Now that said, if I could, Mr. Chair, we have, we have an administrative challenge here in that our pay scale, our pay period, ends up being prior to um, the association has to still go and, and ratify if they choose to. My recommendation to this body is that we, we accept the changes as your, as your representative, the body's representative to the negotiation, and that if it's possible, because we're gonna go through July 1st and hit that first pay period, if, if it was a prerogative of the board to accept this administratively contingent on the signing by the association, yeah. this, would allow the, this would allow the payroll clerk on that first week's pay to not have to go the following pay cycle and rework. Yep. So that's like administrating it. Administratively. It would make yep. it a whole lot easier to simply have the new scale to start the year. Yeah, that so. makes sense. So again, I, if, if, if it's prerogative of the board, I, I'd, I'd like to recommend that we accept it administratively contingent on signing. That at least lets uh, payroll know that we're in anyway. Yep, yeah, that makes sense. And the association and the officers will be coming to a future meeting once it's once it's ratified, if they choose to ratify it. Okay. Uh, um, I, we have talked about this before. I, I had thought that either last year or the year before, we had put money into the budget. I was trying to find it and I don't see it right now. And I forgot, and it was either twenty five hundred or five thousand dollars that 
would go to pay those um, to help pay because that that's been a problem for a while on the details Tom for the details mm -hmm. and 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 I, I forgot if it was the last the last time Scott or the time before the last contract mm -hmm. and we put it in there right so the, the now now that the administratively that's been in the budget process but it's not been in the contract that the town acts as the town it's acts still as a business manager yeah. right but the town we, 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 we created the special revenues fund and now it's in the contract that the town will pay as part of the work agreement Aside from so it, it, we should have been right along too I th it hasn't been a nearly an issue but it wasn't addressed in the language of the, of the work agreement and so it came around this time to make sure that the, inside the work agreement the language change was that the officers would be compensated upon payment from the company in our in our the case of the work agreement now the officers would be paid upon hours work in the next pay cycle mm -hmm. okay and that's really we think you're, you're it's, it's good to point that out that we've been we at the town level and the association have been really flexible about trying to make sure that people don't wait in some cases months to get paid yeah that's that's not fair in that right. respect yep. and if that's the case too then there's a financial right. mechanism to exactly back up right. the contractual right. and everything so yeah maybe we have to start putting a uh, interest on contractors that don't pay well, That's actually, point. Tom, specifically, the sentence that was removed was the town will not make payment to an officer until the town has received payment from the person or entity that requested the detail. That was that was the point. Oh, yeah. yeah. Again, the language that was important. I think the practice has been such we've done our due diligence to make sure people get paid. In this case here, it was important to address it in the language. It's actually not a bad idea, though. And I, you, you have to be. Um, Go back through the years, well, way, that way back about how that's right. It's a really used good to be point. Yep. like a, a separate business on the side. Yep. Mm -hmm. So now you raise a really good point, Tom. And the, we we kind of wrapped our brains around. We had, took a little time to wrap our brains around. How did we get to this point? You know, every every three years you look at the language and. If it's not uh, institutional knowledge that's sitting at the table, there's an awful lot of questions about why. How did this come about? Right. Correct. It, well, it used to be a business. Right. One of the as a business sergeants or someone mm -hmm. was a detail officer. That's right. They would get a percentage to. Yeah. Complicated. Yeah. You got it. All right. So again, if I could, <clears throat> if if it's a prerogative of the board, again, that's the cliff notes. Uh, if we could, if we could, you know, vote contingent upon acceptance, that lets Susan and the payroll clerk deal with the July challenge. Okay. Uh, I'd make that motion. Motion. Okay. Motion. Or second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. There's zero on that. <clears throat> uh, the update I have is I t attended the planning board meeting for the marathon meeting. Yes, it was four <laughs> hours, I believe. Because um, we had to go through step by step through all the bylaws for the solar siting and everything, mm -hmm. and a lot of discussion about plantings and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, and as part of the solar committee and a member of the select board, I um, made my, excuse me, not my, but the opinions of our board opinions known about how we felt about past practices and things like that. Yep. And um, I will say that they did not leave with any ambiguity about how the town felt whatsoever on that note. So um, <clears throat> we'll see how that comes about. Um, but there was a lot of good discussion about we had the butter there, which was good. So good. I don't know. Just a lot of details to work through. That's that's really, I mean, it's just a lot of like nuts and bolts um, going through it. But um, we got that done. So nice. yeah, we'll see what, uh, what happens. There were no representatives from Eversource there. Come on, really? They only had the, actually there were three people. There was like a scribe and yep. then the two people from the, um, the firm representing them in the, the development of it. So, huh. yes. so Eversource is going to be holding it as an asset, but the developer was actually representing the interest of the, for the project piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, that was. Hmm. <laughs> uh, Sherry, town administrator updates. All right. Uh, we received a grant for the from the uh, Green Communities Competitive Round. 
in the amount of $129,805 um, for projects at the elementary school and in the town office building and public safety um, complex. So that was good news that we received last week. Um, I have the contract documents for your approval downstairs, so once those are signed and we have them back from the state, we can get going on that project. Do you remember just in a nutshell, like real quick, like what we were doing with those, sure. just so folks know? Um, at the elementary school, um, the amount for that project is $54,545, and that's for elementary school demand control ventilator project. And at the town office building, $5,686 for mechanical insulation and $25,653 uh, for window inserts at the town office building. And the uh, final project is $43,921 at the public safety complex for energy recovery unit. Okay. Um, and all these things, that not only do we get the money paid for through a grant, but that actually helps us to save money and be even more frugal going down the road with our energy costs so and we come full circle back to the bond rating the sound fiscal management we found there in that respect because we're trying to do everything we can to um, save money where it makes sense and mm -hmm. and also there's a nice ripple effect out there into the world because we're helping reduce the reducing energy system. consumption right that, not just greenhouse gases but um, get us off of uh, a dying fuel sources so Good. And the other thing that I have is over the past couple of weeks, I've been conducting interviews for the payroll clerk position with the um, town treasurer. And we'd like to recommend that the board appoint Cynthia Caproso um, to the position. It's a part-time position doing data entry uh, for the payroll, and that's five hours a week. Um, Cynthia has extensive um, experience working as the district treasurer for the Gil Montague Regional School District. That, that should come in very handy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, do you want a, a motion for that? Please. Motion. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Now this is here on that one. This appointment, just for clarification sake, yeah. Mr. Chair, this appointment is for the current appointment schedule, which is going to be full year, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're right. about to look at the big list again. I know. Yep, that's an excellent point. <clears throat> and it is a big list. Yeah. A lot of yellow in there. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> and that brings us on to our next agenda item, the big list. The big list. <laughs> and we've actually sort of done this over the last, this will be the third meeting that we've kind of mm -hmm. spread this out over. And we did, what we held over for this is essentially what's in yellow, which we were filling in and getting clarification on the duration of those appointments and clarifying yeah. them because, let's see, all of our yellow ones, except there's one, two. Yeah, I see a couple here that were three years three, and a couple yeah. that were one years. And that was, a, that was one area. We're looking to make sure the people who were appointed re remembered their Either term, one that's or right. <laughs> that's multiple. Right. It's like you may have two more years mm -hmm. left to serve. Yep. Yeah. There's I think like three three-year mm -hmm. ones in there. So. <clears throat> um, you want to move this as a slate, Mr. Chair? Yeah, I think so because it might take a little while to read through the entire yeah. list. <clears throat> so if if before we do that, if I could, mm. I'd just like to thank everybody who's on this list for participating on these committees, whether they are housing, 300th anniversary, 120 North Main, election officers, finance committee members, public wares. There's a lot of names here. Some of them are duplicate names, people who do multiple committees or boards, and that's, that's, that's admirable. Uh, but one, two, three, four, five, Six. We have seven pages of names. And I think that's just 
wonderful. Thanks, everybody who participates. I would second that. With that said, uh, move the uh, move the appointment list as slate. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We'll take care of our FY18 appointment. And like Scott said, thank you everybody for doing that because honestly, we are the government and we are what make the town really work. And if we don't work, then the town doesn't work. So. The, uh, the only thing on uh, mm. the FERCOG rep, they're mm -hmm. looking for an, an assistant, assistant vice um, alternate. Um, so I don't know if, if I can't make it. They look oh, for an alternate. Well, they're yeah. when you vote at the FERCOG, you don't vote. Mm. Um, it's not. It's percentage, so they, yeah. they take attendance and. Yep. Every every town has a different so weighted. Yep. Mm -hmm. So like Greenfield, maybe forty percent of the vote. Mm -hmm. So gotcha. I, so I don't know if one of you would like. If I can't make a meeting, if one of you would like. Yeah, that's fine. In this little note, we have an alternate. Okay. Makes sense. We do rock paper scissors. Nah, I get it. I, that's fine. It's okay. a, just a backup. So yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. That that way we can let them know in case. And, and if I can't make it, I'll let. Just shoot out an email yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. Sherry know and okay. But but I always you know sometimes it, it's it's strange how sometimes work they do it. Um, I I think it's important to to have a um, have a selectman. I think um, selectmen have fiduciary responsibility to the town. That's right. Um, yeah. and that's it, and that's a different type of responsibility than. Um, someone that that is a it could potentially be a one one uh, issue. Person. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, actually. Yep. Driven by some whatever the issue happens to be. Well, we we had a vote a few years ago about a pay raise, mm -hmm. where almost every town in Franklin County is given a zero percent pay raise, and the cog had a recommendation of two percent, and they had strong reasons for the two percent. One being that most of their funding comes through grants um, and it was also part and it's, and it's hard to, to say it because but sometimes they can save money by increasing their salaries because they get better grants right, right. anyway that being said there was a very interesting discussion um, by someone like uh, Stan from no, oh, yep. Yep. yep, and from the mayor of Greenfield, um, that that are um, from the executive side of the versus a someone that may be um, has has a different perspective. Mm -hmm. yep. So I, I just think it's good to have a chief executive because they are they are making decisions for the all the towns. Yeah, right, that's true. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Similar to a corporation in that respect. Yeah. It, it's it's different. I, I think and that's and, and and I'm not and again that's just from my perspective what what I see. I mean if you go to a meeting or watch on TV, I mean hmm. important, I think. That's a good point. Okay. Um, we covered our contract adoption there and that yep. one earlier, so yep. <coughs> um, we Is have a, no, got, no, no, please. Uh, I was, um, we have to approve a roadside mower agreement. Oh, that's downstairs. It's the um, renewal of the agreement between the participating towns with Eversource. Oh, uh, yeah. Last year? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I thought you did so many years, then you got it. As far as the equipment goes, yeah, we yeah. were the, we were the sponsor on the equipment. Yeah. I don't know how that, with the working agreement continues on. That's a good question. Well, I, I thought mm -hmm. that when 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 town when we take the lead, so we're paying the when it's paid off, mm -hmm. it stays with the town. Correct. And then they move on to other towns to yep. get them into the agreement. Yep. So, hmm. are we still paying? I will double check that. I believe that we are. Okay. Another year or so to go, maybe. I think yeah. so. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. 
And then the last regular item we have is the Green Communities Grant Contract. We and would that, that be tied to the Green Communities Grant that we just spoke is, about? It is, yeah. The, doc, the contract documents are here and okay. are ready for the board's approval. Okay. So. All right. I'll back up if I could, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. uh, move that we approve, the uh, again, the annual agreement with the neighboring communities who are sponsored right. of the side mower, sure. roadside mower. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I just kind of mowed over that one, huh? I, well, no. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> And then lastly here, uh, the grant award from Green Communities and the Commonwealth is only only allowed if we voted. So I mo move, <laughs> move, move to enter an agreement with the Commonwealth with the Green Communities distribution. Uh, all those in uh, second? Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I, I think that grant is very, a key grant. And it again, is. That's, how do you say it? Um, Sometimes people don't, our, our town members, we never get to talk about this stuff at town meeting. Yeah, you're right. right. About how, and, and they don't see the monies that are brought in to do projects like this. Mm -hmm. and, and not just on a, this, this project, but you know, earlier when Sarah was here with Dave Sagan from the Fish and Wildlife, I mean, we could not have done that. And some people could say, well, what good is it? And it's like, well, if if you know anything about invasive invasive species, you know how important how important yeah. that is. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we, and like we had received an email earlier in the week um, about the bittersweet about the and 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 again, I I think um, information like that is 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 great information to share um, and bring it to the board uh, because immediately the sometimes people don't under, may not be aware of what's happening around and the board of selectmen is kind of like clear and also is immediately like hey yeah why don't we combine that with and i think now with the library mm -hmm. and, and put on a class and let people yep. know about mm -hmm. it so i'd like to uh, thank the individual that sent the information our way um it's good information it's appreciated it's greatly appreciated and and hopefully we'll be able to put a class um, that started the conversation. And again, what I'm trying to say is that if you there's something that you want or think, don't be afraid to send an email um, to let us know. And it does work. I think along those lines, we're kind of looking at, um, I don't think we're probably not ready to talk about it, but we're looking at ways to revamp like mm -hmm. communicating and things like that yeah. before so that we're just not all saving everything up for just the town meeting yeah, and everything. And getting information out prior to. Right, and that might um, be a good opportunity to talk about things like that, you know, so that we can, Absolutely. we're not just trying to, because there's a lot of stuff to go through and typically, you know, everybody's pretty weary by the end of it, you know, yeah. we've, we've plowed through a lot and there's a lot of things that we don't get to talk about, mm -hmm. so that's good. Um, I really think we need a, an ongoing bullet point on the on the meeting for this, but um, we have our, our quote of the evening. <laughs> Closing remarks. Closing right. remarks. Closing remarks. <laughs> so this is from uh, uh, Washington at Life by Ron Chernow. Uh, Washington upon moving north from Virginia to take command of the Revolutionary Army at that point uh, said when questioned about why he was doing it, why he was accepting the charge uh, he said when we must assert our rights or submit to every imposition I'm sorry we must assert our rights or submit to every imposition that can be heaped upon us George Washington All right, there you go it's our little historical moment of the evening that was a good, was a good quote interesting yep that was who is it Tentative to his appointment, but rose to the occasion. There you go. And thank goodness he did. Let's not ruin it. I didn't think he was going to be there long. Yeah. No, he did not think he was going to be there long. What was that a surprise? Um, so some other important dates to remember. We will be closed next Monday, July 3rd. Um, and of course, the following day is the 4th of July, so everybody have a safe and uh, happy 4th of July. And uh, our next Selectman's meeting will be on July 10th. 
and hopefully we'll have a police uh, association uh, representation here and maybe sign a contract. All right, there you go. Any, anything else? Yeah. Right. Uh, any motions to adjourn? Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.